In this video, we're going to take a look at limits um, when the denominator is zero, and also to take a look at limits of piecewise functions. So first, uh, just to recall, uh, remember that a limit uh, will exist um, as x approaches a, and it will equal l only if the right-hand limit and the left-hand limit exists. So sometimes, as we've seen, uh, you can compute the limit by replacing the given functions by a simpler function, as in uh, just putting in a number. However, when the function cannot be simplified and the limit of the ratio does not exist because the denominator is zero, we can use a number line and test points to see if the limit approaches either positive infinity or negative infinity. So let's take a look at an example. So here we have um, this rational function. And if you take a look, for all of them, they're all the same. The only difference is that the first one approaches from the right. The second approach is from the left, and then the third one is just a combination of the two. So the questions are all the same, but you can see that when we plug in 4, we will get negative 3 in the numerator, but then in the denominator, we will get 0. So our question is, well, what direction is it approaching? Is it approaching positive infinity or negative infinity? So what we're going to do is I'm going to draw a number line. And I'm going to take a look at my critical numbers. So the critical numbers are chosen from the denominator and also from the numerator. So what you're trying to do is the numbers are chosen uh, which make each of these factors equal to zero. So from the numerator, we can see that x equal to 4 would give me a critical number of zero or a denominator of zero. Um, we also have x equals negative 1. That would also give me a denominator of 0. And in the numerator, if x were 1, that would also give me a numerator of 0. So I'm going to plot that point over here as well. This doesn't have to be perfect, um, but what we were trying to do now is to take a look at all the different values and see what happens. So from the first one, we are talking about the limit from the right. So really, we only need to take points from the right side of four. So when we plug in numbers, let's say we plugged in, I'm just gonna write it down to keep track. Let's say we put in the number uh, 4.1. So if I put one minus 4.1, I can see my numerator would be negative. If I put 4.1 in the denominator, I can see that four minus 4.1, that would be a positive number. And then four, 0.1 plus 1, that would also be a positive number. So from here, I can see that this whole fraction, because I have 1 negative and 2 positive, the right side of 4 would always be negative. So I'm going to put little negative signs to indicate that the right side would be negative. Hence, knowing this, and because it has a denominator 0, this would mean the graph must go to negative infinity. Let's take a look at the second question. If x approaches 4 from the left, what happens? Now, the, this is why it's important to pick other numbers, too, um, that are the critical numbers. Because if you picked a number, let's say, well, we would like to pick the number 0. If we pick the number 0, we could see that actually it's a little bit too far away from 4. Um, and then something else might be happening over here, which actually might not be happening over here. And we'll show, I'll show you that in a little bit. So I'm going to choose the number um, x is 3.9 this time, because that will be from the left. And here actually we chose x is 4.1. So if I have 1 minus 3.9, I can see that's going to be negative. Uh, 3.9 minus 4, that will also be negative. And then 3.9 plus 1, that would be positive. So two negative signs this time and a positive, that means that from the right side, this is actually going to be positive. So I'm going to put a whole bunch of little positive signs. Now, just to show you what happens, let's say that I did choose um, the number 0. So if I chose the number 0, let me use a different color, I would have a positive number here, a negative number here, and over here I would have also a positive number. So I have one negative sign. So actually over here, where it is 0, all of this is going to be negative. 
Now to double check a little bit more, let's try 1.1, which is right here. So if I put in 1.1, I have 1 minus 1.1, which is negative. And then I have 1.1 minus 4, so that's also negative. And then 1.1 plus 1, that's positive. So all my green uh, negative and positive signs, there's two negatives, so again, this will be positive. So this is still positive over here on the side. So that means that from the left, I can see this is going to equal positive infinity. Now to do the third piece, it's asking what's the limit as x approaches 4. And since from the right it's negative infinity, and from the right it's positive infinity, then this limit does not exist because the left hand and the right hand do not coincide. So just to add one more thing, um, just so that you can recall, these critical numbers, so these are critical numbers, are chosen from numbers that make the numerator and denominator equal to zero. So this one as well. So let's go on to take a look at some piecewise functions and how to find the limits of these. So here's an example of um, a piecewise. We have x um, if it's between negative 1 and 0 and between 0 and 1. So that's going to be that diagonal line that goes through 0, 0. So from negative 1, it's inclusive. So it's inclusive here. And to 0, it's not. And then from 0 to 1, we also get that point. So we're going to have connect these three. Now notice that the, at the origin, it is open. But at the origin, um, when x is 0, the point is actually 1. So I'm going to plot a point here at the top. Uh, we get a point or 0. Y is 0 when x is less than negative 1. So that means that it's open circle, since it's not including. And the 0 means it is a horizontal line going to the left. And then here we, it's also when x is greater than 1. So at 1. And now we're going to draw a line going to the right. So now let's answer the following questions now that we actually have a picture of our piecewise function. So the first question is asking at what point c um, in the domain does a limit exist? So we can see that the limit exists everywhere. However, when x is negative 1 and positive 1, it, um, they don't coincide. So from the left and from the right, um, the limits are different. So we can say that a point C exists for all the real numbers except when C, sorry, except C cannot equal positive or negative 1. Um, question C, it asks at what points C does only the left-hand limit exist? So meaning that they're doesn't exist a right hand, but I'm going to take a look at C and D together. So at what point C does only the right hand limit exist? So some people might think that it doesn't exist at positive and negative 1 because um, the limit doesn't exist. However, from the left at negative 1, um, the point does exist. Uh, there is a y value of 0. And from the right, there is a right hand limit of negative 1. At 0, at the origin, um, the left and the right hand limit are actually the same and that would equal 0. At negative 1, right here, um, we would have, as x approaches from the right at 1, uh, we would say the limit is 1, but from the right, that limit is actually 0. So a limit does exist at those points, so it's kind of a trick question. So I would say that at what point c does it only? So none of them, because every point um, does have a left-hand limit and a right-hand limit. Let's take a look at one more example of a piecewise function. So we're going to take a look at 
this one here. Um, so we have h of x equals to 2x plus 2 um, when x is less than 1. So that's our left piece. So that means that starting from here. So I have this line at 2x plus 2. So I'm going to actually draw a point here. Um, that's my y-intercept, and my slope is 2, so 2 over 1. I'm going to come down and plot points right here. And then I'm going to connect them all the way up to where 1 is. Now it doesn't contain 1, so I'm going to put an open circle where x is 1. Uh, we have a second line, um, 2x minus 2. Now just to help me graph a little bit, I'm going to kind of tentatively plot a point at negative 2, and then plot some points here at 2 because it has a slope of 2. Okay, so it does include x equal to 1, so I'm going to plot a point here. And I'm going to connect these points here, but only starting at 1, because that's where the domain states. All right, so from here, let's find our limits. So the limits of this function, um, from, so 1 from the left, would mean that I would actually use this piece. And we can see that that limit would be 4. Now, the point here that I want to make is, if I don't have the graph, and I can see that this is from the left, I'm actually going to use the left piece. And I would take the number 1, and I would plug it in. So 2 times 1 plus 2, which gives me 4. Now, to show you what this means, let's take a look at the second piece. So this is from the right, which means that because it's from the right of where 1 is, I need to use the second piece, because those are the... That's the piece that refers to 1 from the right, because x is greater or equal to 1. So now I'm going to take 2, plug in 1, and minus 2. And this time I get 0. So this limit is 0. Now since these two limits are not the same, we can say that that limit does not exist. Let's take a look at, at d here. So this limit is asking, uh, what is the limit as x approaches negative 3? Now, since negative 3 is smaller than 1, I'm going to use the top piece to plug my number in. So I'm going to write 2 times negative 3 plus 2, so that gives me negative 4. Now, the very last question, it says h of 1. So I'm asking you where does the function, uh, what is the y value when the x value is 1? So this is the x value. So the piece that we want to take a look at this time is the second piece, because that is actually where x is equal to 1, as you can see from the domain. So when I plug this in, I want to plug in 2 times 1 minus 2. I'm going to plug in the 1 into this function, the second piece, and I get 0.